The following presentation was recorded at the Buddhist Society of Victoria, Malvern East, Australia. Please visit our website at bsv.net.au. Okay, thank you for coming to the Sunday program. Now, uh, anyone have any question? Ask then uh, I can try to answer according to my understanding. Hello, Bhante. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, <clears throat> when, when we place the mind on our meditation object, can you hear me? Yeah. Which for a lot of us is just our in and out breath, right? Okay, a lot of people are doing anapana study. So let's say that the mind, if we create the right conditions, we relax, we, we're awake, <laughs> our mind can stay with the in and out breath. And we begin to notice that there are less and less thoughts. And the less thoughts there are, the less suffering there is. <laughs> yeah. So here's the problem. Someone's used to thinking a lot. After a while, there's just the breath. Yeah. And there's this sort of restlessness. Yeah. That's the hindrance. It's coming back. It's saying, yeah. I can't just be with this simple object. How do yeah. we make it stable that we're OK with the silence? with a silent mind? How can we make our mind get used to it without forcing it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah actually this uh, thinking is uh, based on the, what you are valuing. Because thinking, the mind is uh, uh, normally rely on thinking. Mind, uh, um, uh, that is uh, the way how mind works. The, these things actually based on what you believe and what you rely on or what you take the re refuge that means you what you believe what you think this is the, the, the more useful for you more uh, valuable for you so in your day-to-day -day life mostly you uh, live with this thinking because you think this thinking is useful profitable it is it makes you be, it is it is beneficial for you so that's why this thinking is always a part of your life so uh, therefore uh, the important thing is if you understand this thinking is not beneficial for you thinking makes you more unhappy uh, or thinking makes you more uh, busy person or uh, thinking makes you more restless. In this way, if you uh, consider about your thinking, then naturally you can let go thinking. You, you prefer uh, still mind, uh, silent mind. So you have to build up this concept or build up this attitude towards your thinking at the beginning. So that's why it is important to uh, abandon thinking by uh, cutting off the value of thinking. So you have to uh, uh, train your mind to let go thinking by, uh, with a kind mind. Because kindness is important for train your mind. Because mind is not yours. It is a part of, it is a natural process. So uh, Lord Buddha say, uh, you have to follow the skillful means or you have to use the skillful means you have to be skillful skillful means wholesome the, the, the way of uh, wholesome attitudes wholesome uh, intentions you have to use so that might, that's uh, there is a meaning is uh, you should not use the greed or hatred for abandoning this thinking but you have to be kind to your mind, soft and gentle to your mind, uh, because mind is a part of nature. So, so this, uh, uh, these intentions also come in your mind, thinking also a part of your mind. 
So you have to accept this wholesome part and let grow this wholesome part and abandon the unwholesome part. So they, they, therefore you have to be kind of and gentle and cut off the value of thinking and just let the, the thinking disappear. Let the thinking go away. Do not uh, value uh, thinking. In the same time, you should not try to stop thinking. You should not force to stop thinking. That is, then unhappiness arises in your mind. The uh, hatred or the ill will arise in your mind. That is unskillful means. You have to, un you have to abandon this unskillful means. Only use the skillful means. Kindness, softness and gentleness towards your mind. Be kind to your mind. Be soft and gentle to your mind. And just let, let the thinking be disappear. You, you, should, uh, you, you should consider this thinking is not beneficial. Not. So you, you have, then you can pay attention to your meditation object by letting go this uh, thinking mind. Or otherwise you can say, let it be. And you just pay attention to your meditation objects. Don't worry about your thinking mind. Don't pay attention to your thinking mind. Let it be. Be kind to thinking mind. And just pay attention to your meditation objects. That is the way how to stop thinking. Let, let uh, thinking disappear. If you force to stop it, restlessness arises. Unhappiness arise. Then once unhappiness arise, then the sloth and offer come. When you uh, try to remove the sloth and offer, then restlessness come. They go to these two ends. That is nature. Okay. I've been thinking a lot about what the Buddha says about the first John. And he doesn't say there's no thinking at all. He says there's no restlessness. <laughs> Restlessness and remorse. Yeah. And so the restlessness is this mind's unwillingness to stay with one thing, yeah. uh, or, or, or even something that's moving, like the breath, which, which actually there's quite a lot happening. <laughs> so there yeah. should be enough for the mind to be engaged with. Yeah. But the restlessness is just not used to something so simple. And yet, and yet sometimes it, the simplicity of it appears very beautiful. Yeah. I'm just finding it difficult to not feel that restlessness, the itchiness to think, is that it? <laughs> but anyway, I know you already answered the question, but I'm just yeah. saying that it's... Um, I wasn't saying that all thinking is bad because I know there can be skillful thinking to remind us, notice when we're wandering off, how can I stay on there? But it, I know there can be skillful thinking. I just meant restlessness. That was the problem. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, important sorry. thing is how you uh, take this re restlessness because if, if you understand it is a, it is a nature of mind, you, ha you have to be kind, soft and gentle to the ref restlessness, then it disappears. Because the same, the same mind process, is a, one part is restless. So if you, if you, uh, when you see your mind is restless, then your reaction is kind, soft and gentleness. If, if, you, if you react it in kind, soft and gentle mind, that is wholesome mind. The same mind, the use the, you give your uh, selection, your, your, uh, your preference to wholesome part, not uh, go against the unwholesome part, but you prefer the wholesome part. You you abide to the wholesome part. You use the wholesome part. Once you're using the wholesome part, this unwholesome part disappears. Because restlessness, based on uh, ill will, restless ne restlessness never arises without ill will. It is a part of ill will. It is, uh, it is a part of unhappiness. So that's why you force your mind. That's why restlessness arises. Because restlessness and remorse come together. 
you think, oh, I am not skillful enough. All based on delusion. Actually, this um, uh, uh, slothness, and, uh, slothness and stoffer, restlessness and uh, doubt, these three come from delusion. Because you think you are the owner of this uh, um, mind. You are the owner of the mind. This is foolishness. This my mind is not I, me, myself. It is a natural process. If you take the ownership, then you want to control it. Then you want to put it in a right way. But if you uh, uh, do not take, take your mind as yours, it is a natural process, then naturally you can be kind, soft and gentle to your mind. It is a natural process. It is not under your control. It is a, it is a part of uh, the nature. It, it arises depending on causes and conditions. That's it. So then you create wholesome conditions by uh, the accepting the kindness, softness and gentleness. Be with the, because not taking the ownership or, or the, the responsibility to you, or I am the person who is responsible to calm down mind. I, I, I should do it. This kind of thing based on delusion. That is called non, not understanding the reality, not haven't heard about the reality, or not believing the reality. If you believe the reality, this mind is not yours. It is a part. It arises depending on causes and conditions. When the causes and conditions disappear, it disappears. That is the reality. So this uh, right view is important. Practicing right view is the most helpful thing to uh, let go this uh, the three hindrances, the, the, all, all hindrances actually disappear because uh, when you are using uh, right view. Okay. Yeah, actually we are practicing the right perception. So, anicca, dukkha, anatta, these are three perceptions. These, when you are practicing these perceptions, we naturally uh, um, use those perceptions to see the world. World means the all forms, feelings, perceptions. We take in through this uh, uh, dukkanatta perceptions. So that is the way how, uh, we, we condition ourselves with the wholesome conditioning. That is wholesome uh, perceptions. That is the Lord Buddha. That is how Lord Buddha told us to use these wholesome perceptions for build up the wholesome attitude towards a wholesome vision, the samaditi, right view. Ante, now. Um you said about right view and, uh, and right understanding. Yeah. The four, we have to understand the four noble truths and the cause and effect. So, uh, but, and the Buddha says we, ha we have to have do good, cease from all evil and purify the mind. Now this is, so we as a human being, we want to do that, but really in fact, according to the cause and effect, <coughs> It is just happening, if, if that's what I'm understanding. But still, these five aggregates has, have to implement it, have yeah. to implement the, the moral values, the seal. Um, so can you sort of clarify that aspect? Because we as human beings have to take the responsibility of our actions. But at the same time, there is this cause and effect happening. So are we actually responsible, or are we is it part of the whole system? No, actually, this is the way uh, normally this, uh, uh, most of the time we listen this Dhamma in this wrong way. Because we think Sila is the first thing in our path. But Lord Buddha Sila means the first thing, the right view. If you do not understand this right view, you naturally take the Sila in a different way. You know, then actually uh, it leads to more problems. 
you can take this sila at the first from the this is right verbal action bodily action right livelihood but if you don't have the right foundation you miss the point sometimes you fall into more bad thoughts and bad actions because you first you undertake these things but you have no foundation to hold on it so that's why the people teach this uh, uh, morality but who follow these things when you if you, if it is easy for you then you if there is no big obstacle to you you follow it but if there is a threatening thing come to your existence threatening thing comes come to your uh, uh, reputation or uh, your body or your existence any anything any threaten come to you you react harshly so this reaction come from the wrong view if you, how you see your body and mind how you take it consider it you which kind of thing my body and mind that is that is why the lord buddha uh, in eightfold path first thing is right view without having right view you don't get right intention without having right intention the uh, right uh, verbal action right vo bodily action and right livelihood never arise the, you can forcibly use these things based on different your i me myself view then if a threaten come to your i me myself you act in a, in a different way for protecting because you what you rely on sometimes you think for for protecting my life i have to kill the other person otherwise he will kill me before he kill me i must kill him in this kind of understanding come to you if you don't have the the right view right view is the important if you have the right view do you don't kill even the other person then you see why this person come to kill me then you have the kind soft and gentle mind you can generate metta if you have metta he can't kill you because before killing he see your face then he 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 just grasp your the bodily body language if you can't kill a kind person if he is kind to you this is the reality people don't accept this reality because they haven't seen this reality within themselves that's why lord buddha say it is important to associate with kalyana mitta to believe this reality and come to this reality and practice this reality it is important to see kalyana mitta without seeing kalyana mitta you never come to this uh, understanding proper understanding that is important thing. yeah the, my question is um, more um, specific in that um, the, uh, my understanding is that the patija samupada the cause and effect yeah. is is uh, happening irrespective mm. of that's the law yeah is that yeah. right yeah, yeah so cause and effect is yeah. happening so yeah. though we think we are doing this or we are doing that in fact it's the cause and effect that is happening so yeah. is that cons is that understanding correct like people are doing go people are doing other things they are following yeah. but that is a process it is a natural a process. process it's a yeah. cause and effect yeah. so are we actually influencing this yeah. whole process that is my question as the five aggregates as this human being are we actually um, stopping certain things happening because there is this karmic force also coming into the into play yeah always kar karmic force is coming into play actually the, the, the important thing is the starting point is listening to dhamma first you go and listen to dhamma uh, and think about this dhamma whether this one is true or false this is this useful for me or these things uh, the make a more the foolish me so this kind of things you have to think wisely and accept it and build up the confidence on it and use it so if this process don't happen within yourself you don't use this dharma you you don't you just listen it but don't use it so this process happen because this 
uh, you believe it, this is true. This is because uh, this paticca samuppada always work, but when the consciousness is there, you uh, listen. This is a part of consciousness. The consciousness, uh, the, when you have consciousness, uh, when you when you listen dhamma, you think based on your past karma. That means you, your thinking basis. That if you have the wholesome background, or the, if you believe this is right, this is true, this is correct, then you you think again and again. You 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 try to you want to listen it. You want to understand it. These things come as a process, step by step. So it is it is important that because just believing a sealer or following a sealer is not the the proper way. Sometimes you are you are uh, believing different uh, religion and following some sealer according to that religion. So the important thing is the beliefs of that religion. If you accept those uh, the beliefs and uh, you follow that uh, sealer, that sealer and the Lord Buddha, this, uh, the five precepts also have no big difference. But you believe the root reasons of the sealer, you, that means he, they are beliefs, so you follow that beliefs with the, that sealer. You never come to the, the end of suffering or you are not stop uh, rebirth or going in samsara, you just go in samsara, yeah. in that way. Because that's why Lord Buddha says, Sīla Bhatta Paramasa, is the, 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 the associating with uh, Sīla or other way of living is not lead to the end of suffering. Yeah, I understand Bhante, if we are all, now we are all listening to the Dhamma and, um, and following the Dhamma, yeah. so the question is that, um, people are going along this path uh, but what my question is that is this cause and effect is actually happening without us actually interfering I mean we are now on the path we have listened to the Dharma we have Kalyana Vintra we have all those things we have the foundation so is the is this um, some people reach higher states, some people don't, but that is part of the cause and effect yeah. which we cannot interfere with. So yeah. is that is that what um, is that correct? Is that a correct understanding? Uh, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. This the, the because uh, Lord Buddha said this path happens because you uh, you are chanda. That is me. You want to practice it. This wanting also come because the faith. And uh, you see the, the faith also always growing. When you are seeing the, the good results, the un wholesome states are increasing. You, your faith also increases. So when your faith increases, your, 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 your will to use it again and again is also increases. So then you, are, you are naturally tend to use it to, to spend more, more time for practicing this Dhamma. So then the path start growing. Chanda Chitta Virimansa, the four Iddipadas are growing. Then you are the, the Panchindri, Panchabala also start growing. It is, it is a, it is a part, part of the path. It is happening naturally. So the important thing is how much you are in the, the, the spend time for practicing. So the Padahana, that is uh, called, use, uh, Lord Buddha say, uh, how much you put effort to practice this path? So there is a certain amount of intention and volition also coming into this whole thing. Yeah. So it's not only the cause and effect and the uh, uh, going along the path. There is this five aggregates has to put some. No, the f volition is a part of your faith. This is this is this is these are not apart from the causal relation, relationship. It is a part of the causal relationship. It, it, is, it is there. This is the dependent origination. It, it is not, not something else from uh, the, the, this dependent origination. It is dependent origination. 
This is the, now the wholesome intentions come to you because you are listening to them. You are associating with Kalyanamitas. If you leave these Kalyanamitas and go and live with the, the Papamitas, after some time, you just the, the go away from this path and fall into something else. So that is, that is the nature. Because once you start believing and happy with them, Papamitta, so then you naturally fall into that attitudes and that views and you follow it and go, you go through in a different way. Until you strongly establish in this path. Once you strongly establish in this path, you, you are not, never become happy with the, the unwholesome the, the actions, unwholesome the attitudes. You, are, you see something, this is something bad, this is not, uh, not from the useful, these are not uh, beneficial for me. So I if you have this attitude, you never go and associate with the Papa Mitta. But until you fall into the path, naturally you can fall into the Papa Mitta and you naturally go through in a different direction. Yes, so the people who are, you know, in this path, uh, they... Um, that is because they have good karma. Like sometimes you have people who are doing wrong things, but they fall into good kalyana mitra. They have the opportunity. Like sometimes you hear people in jail. They, so, you know, they have these religious um, teachings from like Ajahn Brahm goes into the jail. So these people can fall into that. So that is a part of the karma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Karma is always acting. Karma is not not your past life act, uh, the actions. The karma is even the present moment. Whatever thing you listen to Dhamma and your intentions change when you listen to Dhamma in the present moment. That karma affect to your next mind moment. That means he, after that you start thinking in a different way. Because you listen to this Dhamma and your intentions change because you are listening to this Dhamma. And then the next moment you think your intentions change and come to a different uh, attitude or different uh, way of acting uh, in your life. Because that is karma, because listening and making intentions always create a karma. It is not just a past life karma. In the That is called Ditta Dhamma Vedaniya. In present life, always, every, every moment you are creating karma. That is a part of this uh, process. This is a Paticca Samupad. Always it is happening. But, but uh, yes, uh, we, we, as worldly beings, uh, protectiveness, we are engulfed in delusion. Yeah. I mean, we are living in delusion. Deeper the delusion is, however much you try to explain, it won't penetrate. The wisdom won't penetrate, the deeper delusion is. But it is, have, we have to first get rid of the delusion, then the wisdom will penetrate. Yeah. The delu delusion is uh, something, actually, Lord Buddha uh, taught us what is delusion and what is non-delusion. And when we uh, practice non-delusion, when we are using non-delusion, we see the uh, unwholesome mental state disappear. Greed, hatred and delusion disappear because we are using non-delusion. That is the important thing. That is the helpful thing to develop our mind to uh, experience uh, special uh, mental states which can uh, understand, give you uh, the proper understanding regarding this body and mind. So, so therefore we have to first practice non-delusion, use non-delusion to totally abandon these uh, five hindrances and attaining jhanas. Once you attain jhanas, you, you experience a different uh, level of existence. And then you see how these consciousnesses are arising within ourselves and how these consciousness, consciousnesses are disappearing, when the causes and conditions are disappearing. So these things we, we, we have to experience within ourselves. So that's why Lord Buddha showed us a path. Start from the right view and end, ending with the jhanas. Um, can I just comment one little thing that occurred to me is that we shouldn't see our cause and effect 
uh, our karma, our cause and effect, as, as concrete. I mean, right through our practice, we're contributing to new causes, yeah. new effects. And I just wonder if that isn't a bit of a, a confusion. Um, th there's nothing set about cause and effect. No, cause and effect changes according yeah. to what, yeah. what we, uh, we bring in. Um, so if we're practising an understanding, a right view to at least some extent, we're, we're changing our cause and effect. We're changing our karma. Yeah. If we couldn't change our karma, yeah. what are we doing? Yeah, it is changing karma. Always <laughs> karma is updating. That is the important thing. Uh, you are abandoning unwholesome karma and developing the wholesome karma. Yeah, cause and effect is, is a yeah, process. It is how it works. Yeah. There is no fixed thing. These things are changing. That's why a lot of say karma is not a one thing. It is many. So the, the which karma is uh, come to ripen? Yeah, th that depends on your attitudes and how your mind mental states are maintaining. Yeah. Otherwise it is fatalism. Yeah. That is wrong. That is wrong. That is called sasatadity. That is the niyata mitchaditi. That is that is the the the, the niyata mitchaditi. Total wrong view. Like God has determined the, your fate. Yeah, yeah. Fate, fate is a fixed thing. Now, Lord Buddha says it is not a fixed thing. It is anicca. It is not certain, uncertain. So, we you understand impermanence, you understand the whole process. Yeah, yeah. 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 It is uncertainty. So you have to understand the and the the karma ripening the the karma ripening also happen depending on your mental states. Then the, therefore that's why Lord Buddha say one day you can totally abandon. The unwholesome, that's why the, a person come to the path, the, the unwholesome uh, come and never get ripened. Yeah. I have a different topic. Yeah, yeah okay. Ah. Thank you. Um, so my question is regarding, um, you know, it's a kind of very low level question. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, so um, when we go through so many disappointments in life, um, you know, a person who hasn't <laughs> Uh, train their mind um, can often get um, depression or anxiety and once you're in a that kind of state of mind um, it's really hard to um, change the thought process because I feel like um, when you're in such state your uh, thinking is sort of weak or not so positive so how can we uh, make sure that thought process can be wholesome again and how can we make it positive? Um, because uh, when I sometimes speak uh, from my experience and when I speak with certain friends, they say, oh, they're seeking some therapy or they're going for counseling or it could be that you need medication to control that situation. But I would like to get your advice to how to uh, make our thought process wholesome and positive when you're in such a state. Thank yeah, you. this, uh, the, it is, uh, I can say, if you, if a person can understand the nature of body and mind, how uh, Lord Buddha taught us, and in that way, if you, if you can think this, this body and mind work in this way, so this is impermanent nature, non-self nature, these things. If you can uh, understand, it is good. It, it is helpful to not try to control, but let go. Be, uh, the, these mental states, you can cut off and you can pay attention to something else. Because sometimes we think this mind, my mind is... Uh, foolish. My mind is, uh, I am not uh, uh, fortunate enough. I am, uh, I am an unfortunate person. This kind of thing uh, uh, drives you through to a bad, uh, this, uh, this kind of de depressed mental states. S that is, the, basically it is based on wrong view. There is no I. 
if we understand there is no i i can just any time i can change my mind and focus to something else if we believe it we can we can uh, train our mind to focus to something else because i heard once um, i think ajan brahm or someone told me uh, that when people start believing that mind is not it is a natural process uh, if we understand the nature of mind we can trace which objects come to our mind our mind go to depression so that kind of objects come to our mind then you see how mind they take that object and work with it so if you are mindful at that stage then you can quickly divert your mind to a different object and pay attention to something else and make mind happy so then you can uh, abandon the the objects that make you depressed it is it is a one way it, but you have to develop uh, the belief that, that means the, the faith toward uh, this understanding this knowledge because you 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 get this knowledge from uh, by listening to dhamma or or by listening to a monk or associating with people who believe this view so when you have this view you get the ability to abandon the unwholesome states unwholesome states means the the unwholesome thoughts because lord would say if you attend to that kind of thoughts if you know the unwholesome mental states are arising or the unbeneficial mental state are arising if you aware of it you can abandon it you should know you can abandon it because sometimes people think once you come to that train you have no other way to do you just follow it that is foolishness because if you know you can just abandon it and pay attention to something else it is possible so that is important thing because uh, the way of mind work you have to understand you have to listen to this uh, this attitude this is not you i me myself it is a natural process because listening to this kind of things you your mind uh, try to experiment it try to use it and whether it is working or not so then can you see i have no much deep understanding about because i haven't counsel this kind of the depressed people but the, that is what what i understand because if a person have this right view if a person believe that right view and practice this right view then the, the important thing is lord buddha taught us to cut off and let go that means the patini saggo mutti chago patini saggo mutti this is the one thing you lord buddha told us to achieve within ourselves so chago patini saggo means you are releasing your mind you are releasing thoughts you are releasing attachments that is the important thing because the attachments our mind fall into unwholesome mental states if we know this at we can release these attachments we can let go these attachments then we we naturally start doing it how this releasing happens cutting off the value of attachment cutting off the value of the object we attach we we attach to these things or we take in these things because we think these objects are valuable to us if we see these objects are re- not really valuable these things are subject to change and vanish one day these things are not no, not never serve us forever even a person possess this kind of um, the, the the goodness or the things because all these uh, uh, forms feelings perceptions are subject to change and vanish it is the nature it is it is a part of the nature and the, our mind also value things but this valuation process also not a permanent thing one day you the you value this uh, one object in this way after sometimes you never value it you value something else it is also a, a part of our mentality so if you understand the nature of our consciousness this uh changing nature of our consciousness you don't uh, value whatever perception come to you in the present moment you know this is also change after some time 
these perceptions also are not a fixed thing. Knowledge, understanding, all these things are not permanent things. These are changing always, depending on causes and conditions. If you understand this nature within ourselves, you don't worry about whatever happened. You just cut off and let go and free your mind. Depression is a suffering state of mind because you are attached to the view. You are attached to the, the perceptions and volitions come to your mind. Feelings, perceptions and volition. You are highly holding on. You know, you don't know, you can cut off and free your mind. Um, yes, Bhante. Uh, thank you. Um, I just want to add, I had depression before. Yeah. And I suffer a lot. Uh, I suffer physical... Uh, I, I had the physical suffering, mental suffering, financial suffering. And I, it happened to me, in my experience, I came to this Dharma talk one day, and I had the Dharma discussion, uh, the Sutta, Sutta discussion. Yeah. And one of the Sutta was the Ajit, Agitation through clinging, yeah, and it helped me a lot. Yeah, agitation through clinging, as as Bante mentioned before, uh, how our mental depression arise, how we um, uh, how we. Um, yeah, how we how relate we face to it, our mentality. How yeah. we face it, how we get through it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it one of the that sutta helped me a lot. Yeah. So it is important to understand how we relate to our form, the forms, feelings, perceptions, and volitions come to our mind, or the uh, the the thoughts come to our mind. How we relate to it. That is the important thing. This relation, you understand, when you understand the Dhamma, when you, have, when you practice the right view, or if you develop this right view within yourself, then you, you have a different relationship to your uh, mentality, or your thoughts, or your thinking. So you, you relate in a different way. Then you, you kinds of tangential, you can let go it. You don't take it serious. You, you know, you can... Let it disappear. If you think, you, you are thinking, my mind, my mind is suffering, then you fall into, because you take it as yours. You don't, if you take it as, it, it is a it natural process. Just, it is, no value to it, no value of it. You just let it disappear. So the different attitude. So this attitude develops because when you listen to Dhamma and associate with the, the people who practice this path or this, this Dhamma. Thank you, Bhante. I just want to add something about when it comes to depressions and other, um, it's almost like a medical condition that sometimes um, you really do need to seek medical advice that, or, or yeah. someone else help. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Sometimes they, they be, they, these kind of things un, have to understand, you have to listen, and, but beforehand you can get medication and calm down your mind and these things. Yeah, that is the easily accessible things. The, the Dhamma, sometimes you never hear. Or once you hear, you don't uh, the build up uh, the confidence or faith towards this Dhamma at, the, at once. That depend, all these are come, many causes and conditions behind these things to happen. Thank you, Bhante. i just got two things just to add to that. So <coughs> depression is a, a chemical imbalance in the brain. That's, I think, the point you're making. And sometimes that person needs to go t for help so they can get to a level where they can then listen to the Dhamma. Yeah. Um, and uh, the, the second thing is, I'm sorry to return to the previous talk discussion, the topic, 
where there's a lot of confusion around the, but the sense of self, yeah. and we're taught an anatta, there is no self, but then I feel I am making the decisions, mm. I am choosing to practice. Yeah. And the way I understand this is this sense of self that we are, we are, we are the agent making the decisions, I am mm. choosing to come to the BSV, I am choosing to meditate, yeah. Um, surely I'm responsible for that. This feeling of this self that you are, that we are developing, that I'm choosing this, this is actually just part of the raft that gets you to the final journey. And so you may think this now, and you may believe that now until you have developed enough, but then when you are far enough on the path, you actually see that was actually a delusion as well. And you let go of that, and you let go of the raft. But you need the raft to get you across the water and in the meantime we are, we see ourselves as making these decisions and making good decisions in terms of the path and uh, no eightfold path. But at a certain point that will be let go of as well. Is that right? Uh, not right actually. At the beginning, yeah, yeah, that is, that is actually, yeah, uh, it, it is, uh, according to Dhamma, Lord Buddha say, uh, it is very clear, if you want, you carefully read the Chanki Sutta. Lord Buddha say how, how a person come to this path. Or the first factor of uh, Sabbasava Sutta, first one, Dasanaya Pahatabha. Because you come to this path by listening to Dhamma and uh, believing Dhamma. Because it is important to understand this believing Dhamma means Lord Buddha say uh, this, this mind is a natural process. It arises depending on causes and conditions. Mind, there is no self. I me myself is a part of delusion. It, it arises because this consciousness program to run based on delusion. That's why I me myself, this concept comes. Without abandoning this I, me, myself, you can't go to the deeper stages of practice or you, you never fall into the path. When you think, when you understand, oh, this is wrong, this is wrong, wrong way of seeing things, wrong way of understanding things, this, this body and mind, there is no self, it is a natural process. If you accept this reality, this truth and uh, try to use in your day-to-day -day life when interacting with all other objects, then you develop that attitude towards within yourself. Then you start seeing the world in a different way. That is called developing samaditi, right view. If you are not practicing right view, you never fall into the right view. So that is the important thing because consciousness itself is deluded. That's why Lord Buddha say, even though you attain Nibbana, even though you attain the higher stage of uh, the, the mentality, that means you go to jhana levels and you experience different level of existences also. But when you come to the five sense world, when you see a forms, you have a feeling, you have a perception. Why? This is, that is a part of the process. Because your, your eye consciousness already programmed it is already uh, run by causes and conditions. You, when you understand, oh, this is a natural process, it runs by causes and conditions, it is not my, me, myself, it is a part of the process, it is, it is the nature. So then you are not uh, just follow your perceptions and feelings. You, th you know these perceptions and feelings are all, always conditioned. These are not my forms and feelings, feelings and perceptions. This is a na na natural process. These forms, and feelings and perceptions are changed depending on when the causes and conditions change. So you don't value it. You don't take it as I, me, myself. It is, it is, a, it is a product of the, the causes and conditions. Causes and conditions are impermanent. They are changing. So the, these products also change. So how, how we claim it is my, I, me, myself? This is not, not I, me, myself. These are product of causes and conditions. If, when you have this understanding, you deal with objects in a totally different way. Internally, with the objects arise in your internal. That means you, 
feelings, perceptions arise in, within yourself. Intentions arise in, in yourself. Also, you deal in, in deal, start dealing in a different way. You don't take it as mine. I mean myself. This is this is a part of the process. So then you 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 see a different world, different way of seeing things. Thank you, Bhante. I don't actually think I was saying something very different from that in a way. Yeah. I think people, when they start on the path, they don't have that understanding yet. Yeah, yeah. And they, there's a confusion around, they hear the teaching, but they still are attached to the sense of self. And there is a lot of confusion around, but aren't I deciding to do this? And you talked about when we, maybe when we're lucky enough to go far enough that we experience the jhanas, then that true insight, the true... No, no, no need to go to jhanas actually. Just practicing perceptions. But it takes Just time. believing this Dhamma and, and using this perception in your day-to-day -day life. That is the important thing. But then the practicing true... jhanas come at the end. That is, that is very far from the starting point. Mm. Very far from the starting point for most people. For most people. But some people have previous life experience of attaining jhanas. They, they go, go to that stage very quickly. But most people can't go. So that's why Lord Buddha says, the most people attain the Sotapati, the first, first uh, the Magga and Pala, but not the others. The final stages are difficult. But when you fall to, when you uh, come to this path, then you are not, come to this path means the first three fetters, Abundant. First three fetters means the Sakai Ditti Vichikicha Sila Bhata Paramas. These three abandoning happening because you listen to Dhamma and practice Dhamma in this way. That is the faith, the important thing. Lord Buddha say, uh, you, uh, uh, this uh, Oga, Oga means the, 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 the flowings within our mind, the outflows of our mind. We subside these outflows. Saddhaya tarati ogham appamadena annavang viriyena chittam acceti panyaya parisujyati. Saddhaya tarati ogham means you overcome these flows, internal flows, because saddha, not because panya. Can you understand? Not panya. Panya arise once you overcome these uh, flows. Can you understand? Sorry, that is it. important understanding. So the sadda is the one we fall into this practice and uh, uh, start seeing the world in a different view. Sorry, Bhante, I don't know what sadda is. Sadda, sadda is the uh, faith and confidence. Faith and confidence build up listening and think wisely and use it to your day-to-day -day life. Then you see the results, good results of it. And a lot would they say, when you using this uh, knowledge, the wholesome states of mind are arising. That is, greed and hatred diminish. And delusion diminish. You see how things are happening within yourself. How things are coming to be. These things you, you start experiencing within yourself. That is a level of vipassana. Then you, you know, oh, this is true, this is right. Then your faith and confidence build up. Then you use that knowledge and vision. Then it gets solidified within yourself. Oh, you have nothing to do with uh, the Silabhata Paramasa. That means uh, practicing many different other things. Just you know how things are arise within yourself and how things are disappear within yourself. This is in the very low stage. When we develop the Samadhi, the when we develop these things, then you know how to abandon the, the unwholesome states and be with the wholesome states and let go things and free your mind. Then gradually your mindfulness becomes... Because the, most, uh, the biggest hindrance to mindfulness is the five hindrances. That means the attaching to these five, the valuing five sense objects, valuing the perceptions, feelings, forms, the forms, feelings, perceptions, volitions related to five sense world. You cutting off the value when you are associating with, when you are using this right view, you cutting off the value and you free your mind. Then when you are freeing your mind from uh, this uh, sensual world, your mindfulness naturally start increasing. You, you can maintain your attention in one object for a long period. Then you see more details 
of things how arise and pass away. Because when you have the right view, you know everything arise depending on causes and conditions. Then you start seeing the causes and conditions. Your attention go to the causes and conditions. Then you see how these things are arise and how these things pass away. Samude dhamma anupasiva viridi, vaya dhamma anupasiva viridi. These things come from the right view. Bhante, I've got a question. Um, okay. No matter how much I hear the teachings on the not self and uh, there's no me, myself, or I, when someone is very critical of my work, mm. then the, mm. the whole thing on reputation comes up mm. and all of that teaching goes completely mm. to the wayside. So, mm. can you, perhaps from a practical sense, yeah. so when that reaction fires up, can you, can you help with, okay, what steps are to be taken to, but from a development sense so that I don't have to keep going down that same path? Yeah, yeah. now your question is uh, the, 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 the uh, reaction comes from the outside, how to deal with it, no? So the, uh, someone else doing, oh, you are doing something. No, well, regardless of whether it's valid or not for someone to be critical. Re yeah. Reputation, all, all of a sudden, my reputation perhaps is on the line, so whatever yeah. the scenario is. But at, at the center of it all is the sense of self. I understand that intellectually. Yeah. Right? But practically speaking, yeah. you know, we hear all of these teachings, but practically speaking, what, what are the steps? What, I know mindfulness is part of this, but what are the steps to be taken so that I don't need to keep falling into this trap every single time? Trap means the, the, the bad bad reactions. Yeah, the the the, the, the unknowns of, that well, gives you un, the, the bad reputation. Well, the trap is the sense of self. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah. So, um, so from a practical sense, how is it that I mean, all of us must deal with this, right? Yeah. So well, most of us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, how is it? What are the steps that we need to take so that we don't fall into this trap? Practically speaking. Yeah. The important thing is, if we take as self. The, you don't see the causes and conditions. If you see every mental state arise depending on causes and conditions, you, you naturally, when you experience something, you, 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 your attention go to the causes and conditions. Then you try to find out what are the causes and conditions, give these mental states you are within yourself or other person. Because if you take as a bad person, I am a bad person, he is a bad person, you see a person, but don't see the causes and conditions. Can you understand? So once you start uh, analyzing or start uh, pay attention to the causes and conditions, then you see this unwholesome mental state, these are arise, these unwholesome actions arise based on causes and conditions. Then you, you try to deal with the causes and conditions, not with the person. Depersonalizing, yeah. Can I, can I respond to that? So, um, so this is a react, let's think of it, this is like in happening in real time, yeah. okay? So there's like a reaction that's occurring. Yeah. I haven't got time to kind of put all this processing in place. So what would be like the first thing that I, I would need to do in order to, one, one is like depersonalize it. Yeah, yeah. So how would I depersonalize it? Yeah, it is important. To, yeah, that is how we have to train these perceptions. So you have to, this view, you have to use your day-to-day -day life. Once you have to uh, think and understand, yes, I mean myself is not existing. That's why, the, in my life, I can say, in my early 20s, I practice this, and I don't know how it come to me. I just listen, I believe it, and I practice it. The... Chakung anicha, rupa anicha, sotang anicha, sadda anicha, gana anicha, ganda. This kind of thinking always I maintain in my mind. So these perceptions then is the that is that means in, if I say in English, the all uh, the 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 forms come to my eye is impermanent. My eye is impermanent. My uh, all sound come to my ear is impermanent. 
my ear also the impermanent. Uh, in this way, the all five senses and mind, I say impermanent. I have to practice this perception. I had practiced this perception for some time. Then it, uh, when I have this perception, when we see any object, I see it as an impermanent thing. And my consciousness is also impermanent thing. So I am not highly attached or highly the fastly reacting on these things. I can let go things, keep a distance. In the same way, anatta, I, this is not I, me, myself. This all forms, feelings, perceptions, and ignorance. In the other, in, uh, again, we, uh, we can practice all the time. This All forms, all, all feelings, all perceptions, and all volitions are not I, me, myself. And all these are impermanent. This perceptions we because in our day to day life from the from the birth we never use these perceptions. We use the if we take people as per personalities. So the we, our training is totally different to this training. For utilize these knowledges, we had to train our mind to use it. That knowledge. We come. We get from dhamma. We get from uh, listening to uh, dhamma. So we have to think wisely and use it in our day-to-day -day life. That is important because we have to work out a method to take into our day-to-day -day life. If we are not use, doing that, we never achieve that knowledge. We, we never get that knowledge when we are dealing with objects. Because we have to trust it and we have to develop that perception within ourselves. Anicca the perceptions we have to develop within ourselves. So then we, we get the ability to use it in our day-to-day -day life. That is the important thing. So that's why bhavana, the first bhavana is samaditti. Asevitae, bhavitae, bhavlikatae. Samaditi, the first thing. Lord Buddha say, Bhavitabhanti me pubbe anasun sute su dhamme su chakkung udapadi jnanang udapadi panya udapadi vidya udapadi alok udapadi. That means that is the first thing. We have to use it. Use this, what is Noble Eightfold Path. The first factor of Noble Eightfold Path is the most important thing we have to use. So we have to use it. When you are using it, then the, your kusala, kusala karma start rising, they're, they're developing in that way. So then that kusala come, come to ripen, that vipaka comes. That means when you are dealing with objects, that come comes. Your past come subside. Because you give the chanda, chitta, vire, vimansa to that one. That is the important part. So that is, that is how, so if you, if you think about how you, uh, if you are doing a job, the skills of that job, how you develop, you have to think in that way. In the same way, you have to develop this one. That is, that's why Lord Buddha says, faith is the important thing. If you have the faith about this view, then you start using it. It is not just a tool, but it is the way of seeing the life. It is the way of seeing your body and mind. How, what is this body and mind? You understand through that knowledge. You have to use it. You have to develop the faith and confidence on it. That is the important thing. Okay. Now we can stop. No? Okay. Thank you.